Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. Okay, and this video today is on this 2006 Jaguar XK S. I believe the S stands for Sport. And this car came to be with a few issues, which um, I will take you through as we go along. But this video is going to focus on the first issue. And it is interesting. It is interesting because we just the last car I've worked on was on the same system. Uh, if you follow the channel, you'll know exactly what it is. So let me start this thing and show you exactly what's happening. So this is the hands-free. So I just have the key here. So we're gonna start the car. And that's the problem. Okay, so let it to come up again, so you can actually see what's going on. There it is, check pedestrian system. So that's the problem, is the check the pedestrian system. And uh, this is a little bit strange because I could swear that when I moved the car uh, from the front of the house to here, I could swear the airbag light was on as well, but it might be just me. I was not really paying attention when I moved the car, so it might be just uh, a placebo effect, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so that message is there. Uh, the guy wants me to look at it and see exactly what's going on. Um, there is other issues with the car, as I already said, but I'll make those into different videos. Now, um, we I have the Maxxis already plugged in, so we're not gonna waste too much time. Uh, and uh, we're just gonna go quickly. Yeah, I need to renew this. So we're gonna go quickly scan the car and see exactly what is causing that fault. Okay, here we are on the main menu. So uh, XK uh, X150. So this is the main menu. We're gonna go quickly to diagnostics. I'm not gonna do another scan. I'm gonna go straight to here. And I believe that's part of the restraining system. We'll have a look if it is. I think it is part of this module. No, it's not. So that means it's going to be a different module for this. So, uh, would that be impact classification system? Well, there we go then. So, uh, right and left impact classification, right frontal impact classification sensor, left frontal impact classification sensor, intermittent, uh, left and right, so same codes. So, uh, B1004-96, uh, B1005-96. So, this is my codes. And I don't know nothing about this system, this particular system, although they all work in a very similar way. So first thing we're going to do is do some inspection around the engine, around the front bumper, uh, front of the car. Um, I don't know the background of the car. Has the car ever been involved in an accident? We don't know. Uh, we're going to have to go and have a look. Um, before, just before that, there's a service manual here. Okay. Uh, let's just go back let me see what live data says if there's anything that will help okay slightly higher but that's fine uh, control two left actuator so yeah that's fine okay so uh, this is for the actuators which I believe they are at the back of the engine bay, so right here at the end of the windscreen is the two uh, airbags that push up the bonnet in case of an impact with a pedestrian. Um, and then the sensor should be at the front. I'm not sure if this has anything on the front of the bonnet. Some cars they have at the front as well. We'll have a look uh, once we open the bonnet. So we're not. Uh, there's not a lot that I can see around here. Uh, if we need to plug uh, JLR, we will do. But for now. 
um, for now we're just gonna have a look and see uh, if there's anything obvious visually etc etc okay guys here we have um, not a lot to see to be fair with you we have the deployment airbags which obviously pushes the bonnet up there's one on this side another one on that side uh, so this is what uh, push the bonnet up in case of a um, in case of a collision and then the sensors they should leave somewhere here at the front I'm gonna guess they're gonna leave somewhere underneath this cover here so we're not gonna have to take this cover off to have a look but before we do that uh, I want to see something because the fact that I have both sensors failing is a little bit weird both sensors at the same time so I want to try something here, which is clear the codes, and I want to see if they come back straight away, or if they just goes off. So ignition off. Okay, ignition is off. Ignition back on. See the fault? Yeah. So this is actually good in a way because then that means my fault is a hard. So these codes they are. Hard codes, if you want to call, if you want to say so, which means whichever the fault is, the fault is there. If these codes would go away now, these would start to become a little bit of a tricky job, because then you know intermittent faults. Anyone who works on cars knows they are the worst, or they can be the worst. Um, so the fact that they are hard codes is actually good. So now um, we're gonna start to dig into it. So I'm gonna try to see. Uh, to take that cover off. I, I'm going to strongly believe that's where they live, somewhere in that area, but once we take that cover we'll probably have access to a little bit more stuff around there and we can see if we see any sensors or if we can start to see the layout of things. So let's gonna, uh, let's gonna have a look. Okay, so so far I'm in the process um, of removing the bumper. Um, it is a little bit tricky, so let, let me take you through. So, so far I took the headlight off. To take these headlights, there's two bolts, one here, one here, and then one here at the back that you can access through there. And you can just wiggle it about and take it off. And there you have the uh, washer uh, hose that you need to unplug, and you have the electrical plug. Okay, so then the bumper, there is a few bolts uh, in there. There is a few bolts here at the top, then on the other side. I think there's some clips underneath as well, or some screws. So yeah, I'm sure you can figure that one out. Um, now, I do strongly believe, I'm pretty much 100% sure that the sensors that the system is referring to is the sensors right there at the back, and that's uh, why I'm remo removing the bumper. Um, it is a little bit difficult to access with the bonnet in place, plus I want to check wiring, etc. as we get there. So, I'm, uh, I'm going to take the bumper off. Um, there is, however, two sensors up here on this bar, one here, one over there. Uh, I unplugged one. I don't think these are the sensors, but I just unplugged it so we can just be 100% sure So I don't then regret that I went to look at the wrong place. So we're just gonna ignition on And I think I'm gonna have I think those are airbag sensors. I'm pretty sure they are There we are. There we go airbag light came on uh, And now we are gonna have a fault on my airbag I'm pretty sure so if I read the codes again, he's not going to bring anything new here. There we go. So that's for the airbags. Let's just end percent confirm. There we go. So that's not the sensors we are looking for. A quick test just to make sure. I only showed you this in case if you are working on a different car. Uh, and you are 90% sure sometimes unplug a sensor that is no reporting a fault and scan the car or just unplug something and see what happens is a good way of uh, establish what is what and to work when you don't have any other information now i do have some jaguar information on pdf files like tsbs and stuff like that um, and flow charts and things like that uh, which um, I could quickly go and check, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be there. So we're going to look at that first. Then if we don't find nothing, then we might start to do uh, some other checks. I've tried to check diagrams and other stuff. All the systems I have um, for quick access, they don't have nothing for this. Uh, so they do have for the airbags, but not for the impact for the pedestrian uh, system. So 
pointless. Uh, but yeah, so let's gonna carry on, remove the bumper, and get to those answers. Okay, I know this is not what I was set to do. Unfortunately, the bolts underneath are all rust. I managed to take two out. The other ones are literally just spinning the clips inside. <clears throat> I have about seven or eight to remove. They are absolutely rust. If I really need to take this bumper off, I would find a way. I would either, I don't know, I would cut the heads off the bolts or something like that. But what I decide to do is take the hinges of the bonnet, push the bonnet back a little bit. And that gives me now plenty of access to get to these sensors. So I just want to show you where is my light. Hold on a minute. Hold on a second. Okay, so what I want to show you is what I've done. And I'm going to do now on the other one. So what I've done on these sensor here oh, you're not gonna be able to see it are you maybe yeah so you can see the plug up here this is the plug for the sensor so I have unplugged the sensor as you might be able to see there right at the top of this blue sensor and now I'm going to sorry about the access the light the everything it's not very good now I know you can't see it but I'm going to unplug the other sensor as well Okay, the other one is unplugged. And what I want to show you, what I want to establish, guys, with these uh, unplugging, I want to see if my problem is like a bad signal from the sensors uh, or if it's actually a wiring problem. And the way I know, at least for the first one I unplugged, that is not a wiring problem, is because when I came here and I scanned the car again, my code changed from B. Uh, B1004-96 uh, to dash 13 okay so that one became intermittent that um, changed to now to permanent the 13 now which I don't know these um, uh, suffix usually have a meaning in this case most likely it's going to be signal uh, correlation or some Something along those lines, I guess. That 13 is going to mean literally no communications with it at all. So if I scan the car again, I'm going to have another code. So this uh, B1005 is going to change to intermittent. And we're going to have the dash 13. That's going to become permanent. Let's going to just uh, confirm our theory. So two codes permanent here. There we go. So... Lost communication web, yes, yeah, the battery went low. I do apologize for that, guys. Um, uh, what I was so there we go. So, my B1004 and B1005 they are now both permanent. So, to me, this is not going to tell me nothing. So, there we go. It tells me for the circuit. Actually, let's gonna plug one back in to see if the hotel tells me. Oh, actually, let's gonna check on the 96. Replace the extra. So you see the difference here uh, Internal fault. So yeah, so even the hotel was already telling me what the problem is my dance I don't want to touch the car just the tool um, yeah, my, my um, so even the tool was already telling me that the 96 was for replace so internal faulty component and The 13 actually tells me to check If it's an open circuit, which you know it is because they are both unplugged So I'm going to remove the sensors to me. This looks like a bad sensor uh, two at the same time is a little bit weird, but as you can see, just by doing this test of unplugging, we already established that the circuit is most likely good. Um, so it's going to be the sensor. So let's kind of remove these sensors, just give you a quick inspection, but I, I don't think it's going to be anything we're going to be able to do. So yeah. And uh, nevertheless, we're going to plug in the uh, JLR just for me to check if it's nothing to do with softwares or some something along those lines i don't think it will be but you never know uh we're just gonna have a quick look see if there's any extra information there and even for you guys to uh get a little bit more information as well but most likely it's going to be sensors i don't know if this sensor needs to be programmed i hope not i hope it's just a plug and play for this uh, like the mercedes but we we we're gonna to have to go and check for that i i guess but let's just do that then and uh, and then yeah get the sensors i guess that's going to be the next step. Let's going to play uh, plug JLR and have a quick look. 
Okay guys, following day uh, and I very quickly uh, connected uh, SSD to be fair with you guys. Uh, kind of a waste because, well not a waste, but it doesn't tell me nothing new. Um, same same codes obviously and when you go to the actually, uh, I did a little bit of work around here. So obviously it tells me that the this is why it is like the relevance as you can see in there. Uh, so it's the ones I should tackle first and as you can tell as you can see it tells me the lost communication with the ABS module That was a battery low yesterday uh, the, the battery is on charge now. I have the, the power supply at the back connected to the battery But yesterday I, I didn't realize the battery was getting that low anyway um, As you can see it tells me here the relevance is in the percent on the ones uh with the suffix of 13 which is for an open circuit as you're gonna see so when I come here into information for the as you can see in there let me so so intermittent DTC as you can see in there so on the intermittent DTC which is for the 13 because I plugged in the, the sensors back in so that was when the sensor was actually unplugged so fault uh, so full type 13 secret open so it tells me straight away to refer to circuit diagrams blah 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 uh, but when we go to the actually active codes which is these ones here permanent TTC it tells me exactly no different than the maxi says so uh, component internal failure install a new say uh, install a new left pedestrian accelerant uh, pr protection accelerometer uh, so yeah that's pretty much what we're gonna have to do guys there's no there's no there's nothing else uh, we can do really okay and hundred and twenty eight pounds and fifty eight pence later uh, we got a new genuine sensor the part number is there okay uh, the part number is there on the package as well c two p one seven one three two um I've just finished the Hyundai for the suspension and uh, I went to pick up this thing. Uh, this has been superseded. The sensor is slightly different. I even questioned the guy and I showed him actually, I was not sure, I've actually showed him a picture because that's the only thing I took with me was a picture from the old one. Um, so this is the new sensor. So I'm gonna guess, judging by the way if it's, by the way he has this side here, I'm gonna guess that this is one bolt that's gonna hold it. And then this is going to go in the place of the other hole. Um, I don't see anywhere here showing instructions of which way it should go. So I'm going to guess it's going to make no difference really. Uh, which way we're going to put it. Uh, I think. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see any arrows, any, any anything. I guess we'll go either that way or that way. So either way, is is gonna go in there. So we're gonna quickly. Uh, they they only had one. Um, I need to fit this. I'm very confident that this is gonna fix the problem. Uh, I've ordered the other one for tomorrow. So tomorrow when I drop the girls at school, I will go there and pick up the other one. They said it should be there for about half nine. Uh, but we're gonna just try it to see if this works. If this works, then guys, uh, well, let's plug it in and see if uh, one of the sensor codes goes away. Okay guys, it's very difficult to record and show you how it is uh, down there, but basically the space is between this here, this sort of air pressure thingy that goes inside the, or the breather, whatever, I think this is a hair pressure, it detects difference in the air pressure, uh, maybe that one works different because I haven't seen this, but unless it's on that thing, I didn't even look, I might look on the next one, anyway, uh, so the bolt obviously it goes is the distance between this and this, so obviously the bolt goes on this side and then the, the little plastic protruding uh, out from the sensor goes on the on the place of this hole you need to, in my case i had to force the loom a little bit downwards in order to be able to uh, for the loom to reach down there because the sensor gets sort of in it, it doesn't go straight it goes like sort of in an angle so the the, the plug needs to come all the way down then in, and plug in but it's done so we're going to turn on the ignition okay ignition is on and now we are going to rescan the car and uh, did I press it or not? Yes, I did. There we go. So we're gonna risk on the car, 
then load the uh, load into the module and see if one of the faults uh, went away. Okay, and the scan is just finishing. I think it is. So let's gonna go to uh, DTCs. Now let's gonna go to ECU. And let's gonna scroll down to my ICM. Where is the ICM? I think I passed the ICM already. Yeah, there it is. What's that? Oh, sorry guys, I'm gonna have to... No, I did scan the car now. Oh, ICS, not ICM. ICS. What do we have? Intermittent. And that one's still... There we go. So this one now is an intermittent code. On the right hand side, which is the one I just fitted. Okay. And that one obviously is still permanent because we still have the code. We haven't changed uh, the other one yet. So just to uh, be under percent sure, uh, where is that uh, recommendations? Uh, is that here now? Yeah, I think it is. We we'll clear all the trouble codes. Okay, so I'm gonna clear all the codes, and then we're gonna rescan the car and. Uh, just confirm that the only code that comes back now is the left hand side sensor. Okay, and all that is done. So let's go to complete vehicle, uh, complete vehicle. Read all the story, all the store diagnostic codes. Now let's gonna go back to session. It's going to update this. Okay, so it's gonna read all the codes again. And yeah. It should be only one code in there now for the other sensor. Let's gonna confirm that. And looks like we have a fix nearly. Well, no fix, we need the other part. But well, it looks like it is the problem. The sensors. So let's uh, let's let it finish. Okay, and it's just finished. It's gonna to go to DTCs. Uh, let's gonna go to oh no is ECU already so let's gonna look for my there we go left sensor all the other codes are gone as you can see here so all the other codes are now gone and the only code we have now which is still permanent is the left frontal impact classification sensor. So the right is already, uh, the code is gone. So obviously now we need the other, uh, there is other codes uh, here, but we're not gonna worry with that. We're just gonna worry with what I was asked to look at. Um, so obviously I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow until I pick up the other sensor, etc. You guys with the magics of YouTube and video editing, you don't have to. So I think I'll see you next when everything's in place. I'm not going to put the bonnet in place, obviously. I'm going to wait until I get the other sensor. But, uh, but yeah, looks like we are in the right track. Okay, and next day, just like magic, we got the second sensor, another 128 pounds. Just a quick reference to the sensors. Uh, when I rang the guy telling he needed the sensors, uh, I told him the price of the dealer because I, I rang the dealer first. Uh, he mentioned straight away going to eBay, get secondhand uh, sensors. I said to him, if you want that, you're gonna have to get them yourself and take responsibility if they fail again or if they don't work, whatever. Uh, was at this point I just uh, retract and he said okay go to the dealer and get the genuine ones okay so that's where we are but yeah we have the second sensor okay just picked it up this morning uh yes the car is a right mess at the moment as you can see uh watch my other videos to understand what we are doing uh videos coming next if not out already i think will be next probably anyway uh too much talking let's gonna fit this in and see if all the codes uh, for the pedestrian system are gonna go away okay new sensor is now fitted this is the old one 
So uh, we are going to uh, give a scan. I'm using the Maxisys today. I'm not going to turn on the laptop. I don't think I need it now. So let's go and uh, turn my ignition on. Okay. There we go. Let me see if the warning comes on straight away. It looks like he's gone already. Is it gone? <laughs> Look, I didn't even need to delete the codes. The error is already gone. Uh, nevertheless, I need to put this battery in charge. This battery is not very good. Uh, there we go. ICS. Trouble codes. It's going to be all past codes. Intermittent. There we go. Clear DTC. Ten volts. This battery is so bad. I'm gonna have to ring the guy. I want a new battery for this thing. I want a new battery for this thing. Definitely. I've turned the ignition on the first time today this morning, and look at the vo the battery voltage. This is really bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. Anyway, uh, that's gone. That's all he that matters. So uh, on and off. I don't want to do this much longer. Okay, so the codes are gone. That's going to put this battery in charge. But the, the, the problem is fixed, guys. The warning is gone. We don't have the pedestrian fault anymore. It's going to turn this off. Okay, I'm going to put the battery in charge. Um, but the problem is sorted, guys. So now I'm going to... I'm going to put the bonnet back in place. Um, and... Uh, and carry on with the other faults, but... For the pedestrian was the two sensors really weird that the sensors failed both at the same time or it could have been that one sensor was already gone for some time and the guy just drove i never asked him uh, the guy just been driving like that with one sensor and with the warning and in the meantime the other one failed but obviously in the screen it just carried on coming up with the same fault but then in the end both sensors were actually bad um so yeah as i, as I was saying that's kind of finish the car but this for the video that's it guys in the end two bad sensors so with no further ado guys i hope you enjoyed the video hope there's some information here you guys can find useful if you do have any questions any comments you know how it works just put them below and like always thank you for watching